Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we design, build, and fly the Light Ranger 3 RC model airplane. Let's get to it. Note that plans for this are available for download in the description. The Staggerwing design was inspired by the Beechcraft Staggerwing plane for the 1930s, Staggerwing meaning that the top wing is behind the bottom wing on the layout. Uh, plans done in QCAD are available for download. You see the full-size QCAD, QCAD printout of the fuselage. Uh, you can very easily trace this on the foam board. Note that the positive incidence, incidence is built into the top of the fuselage. This is a foam board fuselage shown here with the paper peeled off. The paper adds a fair amount of weight. I do like to take it off. As you can see on the bottom, a few remains are left, but it's not too bad. And there's the paper right there, surprisingly heavy for the weight. These are the two fuselage sides cut out, the um, QCAD outline on top and the two bottom ones. And here's a view of the fuselage uh, being constructed with the um, three 16-inch foam board formers in place, the plywood to be added later for the firewall. This is an update on the Light Ranger 3. As a reminder, the Light Ranger 2, and I'll put a card up here for Light Ranger 2, this was another iteration of my Light Ranger series, um, this time with the cabin design, still the saran wrap covering. I did a little bit bigger wing. This is about a six and a half inch cord versus a five and a half on the one and I was experimenting with the flap rods. You can see how that works. So what I want to do for the final iteration of the Light Ranger is this Light Ranger 3. Uh, this is where we are so far with the Light Ranger 3. I've got the um, plywood firewall in place. I put some coverings on the front just to make it a little bit stronger. Also in the Light Ranger 2, the fuselage was about one and a half inches wide. This one I made uh, two and a half inches wide. Just It's a little bit wider is what you need. Um, just to have a little bit more room to put your equipment in. I think it's a little bit easier to do. But the big thing about the Light Ranger 3, just an experiment, I'm doing a biplane, but I'm going to be doing a stagger wing biplane. In other words, the top wing will be further aft than the bottom wing. And so in addition with the wings, I'm not going to uh, cut out the squares. I'm just going to leave them solid. Uh, 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 3 16 inch foam board. I've taken the paper off, which is pretty heavy. So this is very uh, flimsy and lightweight. I will be using the two millimeter carbon rods. I'll glue that underneath to give some strength to the wing. We'll see how it works. A little bit of extra weight um, without the squares on the wing, just as an experiment. The top wing will be glued on when I'm all set. And what will happen is the bottom wing will be uh, removable with a rubber band. But this is kind of a view of what it's going to look like. You can see the top wing is here, the bottom wing is down here, the top wing is a little bit further back. Again, to echo the Beechcraft stagger wing for the 1930s. It really doesn't matter if the top wing is forward or aft. It just um, it doesn't matter to the airplane. So we'll see how this works. And I think I should be able to fish it up tomorrow and uh, give it for a test flight. Uh, the one other thing that I'll be experimenting with is I do intend to put a little bit of this lightweight packing tape on it just to give it a little bit of color. I'll, I think I'll do it on the wings, maybe the fuselage side, just to see how that goes on, how it holds up for flying. A little bit of extra weight, but we're not fixated on the weight like we were the original Light Rangers. I'm willing for a little bit of extra weight and um, we'll just see how that works. So that's, that will be the objective of this one. It's absolutely imperative that you use carbon fiber rods on the foam board to give it strength. There is absolutely no strength inherent in the foam board. I took two 15 inch, two millimeter uh, carbon fiber rods with uh, heat shrink tubing, connected them with the middle. And then with this 30 inch length, a little bit less for the overlap, I just put it onto the wing and I hot glue the carbon rods in place. And this does a great job of uh, attaching it to the foam board. See the ailerons have been cut out at this point on the top wing. I'm also using plastic packing tape on this, so I put this on the bottom as another way to hold on the carbon fiber rods to the bottom of both wings. This is another view of the wing with the aileron servos installed. I just used regular high-tech HS40 servos with a Y connector. Uh, no flap rods in this model, just normal ailerons on the top wing. 
I'm also experimenting with using the strapping tape to cover the wings uh, themselves and the fuselage sides. Strapping tape is lightweight. It goes on very easily. You'll have to practice with it to get the technique. It's quite, quite sticky. Here we can see the ailerons connected to the aileron servos with the lines for where the fuselage will go. The top wing is glued in place. The bottom wing is held on with rubber bands. You can see the popsicle sticks on the bottom wing just to keep the rubber bands from digging into that very uh, light foam board uh, structure. I've completed the Light Ranger 3. I think the weather will be good tomorrow. We'll head out to the field for a test flight. Um, here's a model right here. I've elected to glue on the wing. 7x3.5 prop, the um, Park 250 motor, the details are in the description. I just tried a little bit of the yellow tape on it. I think if you're careful, that goes on pretty well. I covered the wing before I glued it on. I think that was okay. Notice on the underside, we have the carbon fiber rods absolutely required to keep the wing rigid. A little build up for the servos, they're hot glued in, in place. As a technique to not get the hot glue on the servos, which you don't want to do, I just take some masking tape, put that around the servos, and then I put the hot glue onto the masking tape. So when you remove the servo, you just remove the tape, the servo's clean, it's like nothing happened. So here's the nose section. Again, you're keeping the weight as far forward as possible. We've got the motor, uh, Velcro for the battery, the battery connector, and then I put a little wedge of foam for the receiver and the electronic speed control. The elevator servo is here. Notice that it's, the tape is around there. It's just hot glued to the side. And then just for simplicity, the uh, connection to the elevator servo. So we're all set. So let me take a moment. We'll keep the video running. I will speed it up. I'll put on the bottom wing, plug in a battery. We can see the control throws. So here's the completed model. I like the stagger wing design. I think that came out nice. Um, the real stagger wing has interplane, interwing struts. No need for this one. It's just a test version. I think I'm going to make another version. I'm going to make the fuselage just a little bit higher for a little bit more spacing, but it's a kind of interesting effect with the stagger wing. The center of gravity is 25%, or actually I'm using about 28% of the distance between the front leading edge of the bottom wing to the back of the top wing is considered one surface for purpose uh, for balance purposes so it's on the plans and this balances out very well at this location for the flight tomorrow notice also with the rubber bands uh, the 3 sixteenths inch foam board is not strong at all i just took some popsicle sticks and i hot glued those in place uh, top and bottom so that it doesn't dig too much into the wing and i think that'll work out okay for holding on the wing for this model so um, let's see how it works. There's the elevator up, down, ailerons on the top wing only. I think there'll be plenty of throw for that. There's no rudder and we'll see how much power the little motor has, the Park 250. I think that should be adequate. We'll find out tomorrow. So the total weight is 6.8 ounces, heavier than I would have wanted. But again, I didn't have any lightning holes in the wings. Maybe I'll have that for a second version. It definitely is heavier at 6.8 ounces, but we've got two wings. So we'll give it a shot tomorrow and see how it flies. Right here at the field, it looks like a very nice day. We'll do a test flight of the Light Ranger 3, my stagger wing design. I think we're all set. The wing is put in place. I'll hook up the battery, do a quick control check, and then we'll see if it flies. This is the honest to goodness first flight of the airplane. A little dip going out, just feeling out how it's going to fly. But the plane just handled well. It um, probably had a little bit too sensitive on the ailerons that could be easily uh, fixed at the transmitter. Plenty of power. This is about one third throttle. And you see as we get towards the end of this video, by the way, the video is uncut of this entire first flight. Just everything you see is as it happened. 
But towards the end, I got very comfortable, could fly low, a little bit slower to the photographer to get better pictures. Just a great little fun airplane that could be built in a day and just uh, take it out to the field and fly. So just back from our maiden flight, that was that was the maiden flight of this airplane. I'm, I'm happy. It flew absolutely fine. There was plenty of control. The elevator was just where it should be. The airlines were a little bit sensitive. I may uh, uh, tune them down a little bit for a little bit less throw. But, oh, and the other thing was the center of gravity was correct, which is about four tenths of an inch back from the top wing. Again, take the distance from the leading edge of the bottom wing, trailing edge of the top wing, it's about 28% of the way back, so the CG is about here for a stagger wing, whether the wing is forward or back. But it's a nice little airplane. I like it a lot. I, um, this is a, a, a prototype. It's a test version. The tape goes on pretty well. I think this is uh, absolutely suitable for a follow-on effort with a little bit more detail. The engine had plenty of power and um, looks a little bit different in the field. I'm very happy with it. And plans are available for download. Good luck with yours, and um, see you at the flying field.